Welcome to Brainish English Stories. The honeymoon was wonderful. They had an apartment with the reddest new carpets, fancy curtains, and six cups with pewter lids on a shelf in the dining room. They were still amazed by everything. They had never seen a yellow flower by the river, but if they had, it would have looked like something special. The bride sat in a rocking chair, dreaming in her pink kimono. She wondered what people in faraway places were saying about her marriage to Kid McGarry, but it didn't matter. No fighter from London to the Southern Cross could beat her husband. He had been hers for three weeks, and he listened to her more than to any fighter in the world. Love means giving up things for the one you love. When other people have love, it can sometimes look like they are proud and selfish. The bride crossed her feet and looked at the painted cupids on the ceiling. "Dear," she said, like a queen asking for a gift, "I think I would like a peach." Kid McGarry got up and put on his coat and hat. He was serious, clean-shaven, loving, and quick. All right," he said calmly, like he was just agreeing to fight the champion of England. "I'll go get one for you. Don't be long," said the bride. "I'll be lonely without you. Get a nice ripe one." After saying many goodbyes, Kid McGarry went down to the street. He stopped for a moment because it was early spring and it would be hard to find a summer fruit like a peach. At the Italian's fruit stand on the corner, Kid McGarry stopped and looked with dislike at the oranges, shiny apples, and pale bananas. "Do you have a peach?" asked Kid McGarry in a friendly way. "No," sighed the vendor. "No peaches for one month. It's too early. Do you want a nice orange?" Kid McGarry did not want an orange, so he kept looking. He went into an all-night restaurant and bowling alley owned by his friend Justice O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan was busy checking his place. "I need to be clear," said Kid McGarry to him. "My wife wants a peach. If you have a peach, get it quickly. I want it, and maybe more if you have them. You can have anything here," said O'Callaghan. "But there are no peaches." It's too early. I don't think you can find peaches anywhere now. That's too bad. When a lady wants a certain fruit, nothing else will do. It's too late now to find any good fruit stores open. But if you think your wife would like some nice oranges, I have a box of good ones. Thanks, Cal. But it has to be a peach. I'll keep looking. It was almost midnight as Kid McGarry walked down the street. Few stores were open, and they laughed at the idea of having peaches. But in her home, the bride waited for her peach. Could a champion fighter not find a peach? Could he not find a peach in this big city? Kid McGarry saw a window with bright colors. The light suddenly went out. He ran and caught the fruit seller locking his door. Peaches, he asked. No, sir, not for three or four weeks. I don't know where you could find some. Maybe at an expensive hotel where they have a lot of money to spend. I have some very good oranges that came in today. The kid stayed on the corner for a moment. Then walked quickly towards a pair of green lights by the steps of a building down a dark side street. Is the captain here? He asked the desk sergeant at the police station. At that moment, the captain came forward. He was in plain clothes and looked busy. "Hello, kid," he said. "I thought you were on your honeymoon. Got back yesterday." I'm a good citizen now. I want to help with city matters. Do you want to get into Denver Dick's place tonight, Captain? 
Denver's place was closed two months ago, said the captain, twisting his mustache. That's right, said the kid. But Rafferty chased him out of the 43rd precinct. He's running his games in your area now, and it's bigger than ever. I don't like this gambling. I can help you catch him. In my area, growled the captain. Are you sure, kid? I'll be grateful. Do you know how to get in? How can we do it? Hammers, said the kid. They haven't put steel on the doors yet. You'll need ten men. No, they won't let me in. Denver is mad at me. He thought I told about his other place. I didn't, though. You need to hurry. I have to get back home. My house is only three blocks from here. In less than ten minutes, the captain and a dozen men followed the kid into the hallway of a dark building where many businesses operated during the day. Third floor, back, said the kid softly. I'll show you the way. Two men with axes stood in front of the door that the kid pointed out. It seems all quiet, said the captain, unsure. Are you sure about this? Break the door, said the kid. It's my fault if I'm wrong. The axes smashed through the wooden door. A bright light came through the broken door. The door fell, and the police rushed into the room with their guns ready. The big room was decorated in a fancy style that Denver Dick liked. Many people were playing games. About fifty men in the room ran towards the police, trying to escape. The police had to use their clubs a bit. More than half of the men got away. Denver Dick was there that night. He led the men trying to push the police away. But when he saw the kid, he became angry. Denver Dick, being a big man, jumped on the smaller kid. They rolled down the stairs together. At the bottom, they got up. Then the kid could use his boxing skills, which he couldn't use while fighting a big, heavy man like Denver Dick, who was losing $20,000 worth of gambling stuff. After beating Denver Dick, the kid hurried back upstairs and threw the gambling room into a smaller room connected by an arched doorway. Here, there was a long table set with fine china and silver and lots of fancy food. The fancy style showed Denver Dick's taste. A large, Shiny shoe stuck out from under the tablecloth. The kid grabbed the shoe and pulled out a black man wearing a white tie and servant's clothes. Get up, said the kid. Are you in charge of this free food? Yes, sir, I am. Have we been caught again, boss? Looks that way. Listen to me. Are there any peaches here? If there aren't, I'll have to give up. There were three dozen, sir, when the game started this evening, but I think the men ate them all. If you want a very good orange, sir, I can find you some. Get busy, ordered the kid, seriously. Find any peaches you have quickly, or there will be trouble. If anyone offers me another orange tonight, I'll punch them. The search through Denver Dick's fancy food revealed one last peach that had not been eaten. The kid put it in his pocket and quickly left with his prize. He barely looked at the scene on the sidewalk below, where the police were loading prisoners into patrol wagons. He walked home quickly. His heart was happy as he went like knights who came back home after brave deeds for their ladies, the kid had done what his bride wanted. True, it was just a peach she wanted, but it was not easy to find a peach at midnight in a cold city where the February snow was still hard. She had asked for a peach. She was his bride. 
The peach was warm in his hand and his pocket so it wouldn't fall out and get lost. On the way home, the kid went into an all-night drug store and said to the man with glasses, Hey, can you check my rib and see if it's broken? I had a little fight and fell down some stairs. The druggist looked at him. It's not broken, he said, but you have a bruise that looks like you fell off the flat iron building twice. That's all right, said the kid. Can I use your clothes brush, please? The bride waited in the soft pink light of the lamp. It felt like magic had not left the world. By just saying she wanted something small, a flower, a pomegranate, or a peach, she could send her man into the night, into the world that could not stop him, and he would bring it to her. Now he stood by her chair and put the peach in her hand. Naughty boy, she said with love. Did I say a peach? I think I would much rather have had an orange. Blessed be the bride.